Okay, before start, I think I want to say the uh, this is a case is a is a not not a success case. It's a fail case. So if you are not interested in about one fail case, then you can switch to other <laughs> room to listen other topic. And I I think that I, in in this session I will introduce uh, something about the key ring, the key uh, retention service in the kernel, and also is pension the EFI secure, secure key and why it, it finally does not did not accept by the um, main line. So let's start. I think. Okay. Okay. Let's start. So it's my topic. Uh, I want want to uh, share what my experience about the development, the develop the uh, EFI secure key, and the why finally uh, kernel option did not accept that. Okay, the agenda is uh, first uh, I will uh, introduce the key retention service in the kernel. Then uh, I introduce another two kinds of the uh, key type is a trusted key and the encrypted key. And the third is uh, uh, my implementation of the EFI secure key. Then the, the reason for why the uh, is not accepted by mainline. Then uh, Q&A. Uh, first, the, the original idea is uh, uh, because I, I, I try to develop the uh, hibernate authentication and the encryption uh, functions in a kernel. And this function need one, uh, we, we need a one key to uh, authenticate and encrypt the uh, snapshot image of the hibernate. So the, um, it's a long time ago, it's a five years ago, uh, 2013, the um, Iji Koshina uh, writes an idea say we can maybe keep the secret in the EFI pool variable. Then we use the EFI stop to read the secret from the, uh, before the uh, be before kernel start. Then uh, forward to the uh, runtime kernel. Then runtime kernel use the key to uh, encrypt or authenticate the uh, uh, hypernetic nature image. So he, here is one uh, have a uh, uh, history. Uh, the, for the key original uh, develop, uh, implementation is a uh, use a PKI and work with the Gary Lin, and Gary Lin put a one uh, uh, key pair generator in the stream bootloader is a first up level bootloader. Then uh, before is is big boot service the uh, EFI stuff in the kernel read the. Uh, Read the uh, key pair uh, from the EFI variable to the then forward to the kernel is the first version. Then second version uh, is a two uh, two thousand fifteen. Uh, it, because we uh, we uh, share this not uh, idea in the uh, Linux bomber, and uh, someone some some uh, suggestions say we 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 don't need use a PKI. We just uh, use a similar key. So the second uh, version is a uh, the implementation is a use a similar key, and uh, with the HMAC, HMAC, and to uh, sign the uh, hibernation uh, image. Is a second version. Then the third uh, uh, is now is this year uh, I separate the key, the EFI secure key, and the uh, the hibernation authentication and the encryption functions. Uh, because I started why uh, a ways, uh, uh, I found uh, if I I try to push the both two uh, two new function to different uh, subsystem is is not is is hard to uh, to success because uh, it's related to the key retention service and also related to the power management subsystem. So I try to separate. The two functions, and uh, because I think I also think the EFI key can also can be warped as a new key type, a uh, uh, kernel master key type uh, for other uh, kernel service, not just the uh, Hibernate. So this is my idea. Okay, uh, first I want to uh, introduce the uh, some uh, uh, general uh, knowledge about the key retention service. Uh, it's, it's a one service in the uh, in the kernel. It can can be uh, used to carry 
uh, some uh, cryptographic keys or authentication tokens or cross, uh, cross uh, domain user mapping, something like this. Actually, uh, we can say he can carry anything, any blob from the user space. But uh, um, uh, in some case, uh, the blob must be uh, assigned uh, with the trust by the TPM. So I will I will explain uh, I, I will describe it later, and uh, any kind of authentication or SSH information can be stored as a key. Uh, it's a one key type. Some some of the key type in the kernel, then uh, we can use a loader chunk in different kernel uh, subsystem. Oh, uh, this uh, picture is a simple. Uh, uh, idea about the uh, key ring subsystem. We say, uh, uh, we always always call it a key ring, but actually it's a key retention service. Uh, in, the, uh, in the user space, we can use a key control tool to uh, add, update, or read, or even revoke the key in the kernel space. And uh, after a key, the enroll to from the user space to kernel space, then the, uh, like, like the uh, VFS, uh, uh, E-encrypted file system, IMA EVA, EVM, or de-encrypted loader subsystem, uh, or network, or uh, kernel module signature check. Loader function can request the key from the key ring. Uh, they have uh, some key ring in the uh, kernel, like a uh, system key ring, session key ring, user key ring, have uh, some different key ring. Then some of the uh, key must be uh, like a trust, TPN trusted key either a sealed or, or must be unsealed by the TPM. So not, not all, all of the keys must uh, work with the TPM, but uh, like trust, uh, TPM trust a key. It's a one, one kind of a key type is must use the TPM to seal or unseal. We said it encrypted or un, uh, decrypt by the TPM. Okay. Then this picture show up the uh, structure of the uh, key in the uh, Linux kernel. Uh, one one uh, key including the metadata and the uh, payload. The payload is from the uh, normally is from the user space, uh, like uh, the user key and trust key or encrypted key, and uh, uh, all every key have uh, one uh, uh, key structure. It's a, uh, it's a store the metadata, like a serial number, type, and some uh, description. The description can be used to uh, search the key by the key control tool, and the access control information, uh, so on, so like this. So it's a, a structure. Then the structure will be have uh, one uh, payload point to point to the uh, start address of the payload. Okay, then we uh, I will uh, introduce the uh, uh, trusted key and the encrypted key. It's a two kind of the different keys. Uh, trusted key and encrypted encrypted key uh, were were uh, introduced things uh, to two thousand six to uh, thirty eight kernel is a contribute by the IBM, and uh, both of uh, those are two two new type of key. Are, uh, uh, are generated uh, by the kernel, and they are, all of them are uh, similar keys. And the user space can only see, store, and load only the in encrypted blob, which means that the secret in the uh, in the payload cannot be uh, exposed so to the user space. So user space can only see the encrypted uh, key, but it cannot touch the, the real uh, pen text of the key. So uh, kernel kernel uh, kernel generally loads a key in the kernel space, but uh, and the user space can uh, it can be exposed uh, is exposed to the user space user space by the key control tool. Then uh, user space can take the key and store the <coughs> sorry and store the key to anywhere, but uh, no one knows those key the the real real key in the in the encrypted blob. Okay, uh, first uh, we, we, uh, I will introduce the in, uh, trusted key. Trusted key is uh, either use uh, TPM both to generate and uh, seal the keys. 
Uh, the keys uh, key with the keys uh, actually is uh, one random uh, random value, random number from the uh, uh, random pool in the kernel. Then a kernel use the TPM to steal the uh, random number. And uh, normally, uh, optionally, uh, we, we can see with one specific, uh, with some specific PCR, uh, uh, PCR register in the TPM. So uh, we can protect the, uh, the encrypted blob can only be unsealed, we say the decrypt in the same machine. Which means that uh, even you got the uh, blob, the encrypted blob, you cannot decrypt it unless you touch the machine, the TPM, the same TPM on the same machine. So uh, the same key can, can have many uh, saved blob on the different PCR value because maybe your, your uh, machine is boot, uh, can be put uh, by the different kernel. Then if you still want to use a, uh, in, a trusted key, then you, you can uh, encrypt, uh, receive uh, those, those uh, uh, blob by different, uh, P, with a uh, different PCR, yes. So it's a, it can uh, be used when you uh, body boot the machine. Okay, this picture is show up the, uh, the flow, the flow in the kernel to create a trust key. Uh, as, as, you, as we see, the, uh, a new key will be a uh, uh, request from the key, key, uh, random number generator in the TPM. So then we got a one uh, random number. It can be, it will be the uh, uh, key pen text. Then we, we also request a one random number. Uh, sorry. Then the second step, we uh, request, we uh, read the PCR, uh, then the, uh, then uh, produce uh, PCR information uh, structure. Then we we use the uh, PCR information structure and the new key, the new key, just a, a random number, to uh, put to the uh, TPN to request the TPN to seal it. Then TPN use a SR key, is a storage root key in the TPN to seal the uh, to we, we say seal uh, actually is a encrypt encrypt the uh, the random random number to be a key. So uh, it it generate a TPN store data is a, a standard in the uh, TPM. Then it is a payload. Then then the payload can be attached on one a uh, key structure the. We say oh, we, we use a key structure to, to uh, initial the key structure to be a trust key. So we give the metadata to the structure and attach uh, attach the uh, payload on the structure. Then we we create one uh, uh, trust key. Uh, after that, uh, if if we don't want the other guys uh, can uh, use a TPN to unseal our our trust key. Then we can request a uh, random number, maybe from the kernel, the random pool in the kernel, or uh, the uh, uh, random number generator in the TPM to uh, camp camping to camping the PCR. Camping means we just uh, hash the random number with the PCR. Then the PCR will only uh, have one uh, random number. Then nobody can use the PCR to unseal the key anymore until next next book. That's a reboot. Okay, this picture show up, show the uh, uh, trust key payload. It's a uh, uh, data structure in the kernel. Um, the payload is very simple. It have a RCU lock and a key lens and a blob lens and a migrable. Maybe it can be migrable, like I just, uh, I just say, it can be received. Uh, with the other PCR, because maybe you want to put it uh, to our, uh, by the other kernel version, so you can uh, receive the, the original key. And uh, the key lens uh, means uh, the real key pen text, the lens of the key, uh, the key pen text. Uh, so uh, every uh, trust key, it, it, it has a pen text, uh, in, unsealed pen text in the kernel. So if anyone can use the uh, and it interface to uh, walk through the uh, kernel memory space, then he can very easy to uh, look at the, those pen tags in the memory. So then the, that is 
one is a blob, the is a one uh, encrypt, encrypt uh, blob is uh, encrypted by the actually sealed by the TPM. So the 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 format is a TPM underlying uh, stored underlying data is a uh, one standard uh, format uh, in the TPM uh, spec. So then the the blob the in sealed blob can be dumped or exposed to user space. Okay, after the trust key, then based on the trust key, yeah, trust key is a, a TPM uh, sealed key. So we can use a trust key to generate uh, uh, encrypted key in the kernel. Uh, in the encrypted key is, uh, is not rely on the TPM, it's uh, totally uh, generated by the kernel by using the uh, one random uh, number as a, a pen test of the key and uh, use the uh, the uh, trust the key to encrypt the uh, encrypt the key before it's posed to the user space. The benefit of uh, this key is uh, uh, it can it can it is uh, faster and uh, is use uh, AES to encrypt and decrypt. And the new key is uh, uh, it actually is a uh, one random number from the uh, uh, the kernel, and uh, it uh, can be encrypted and decrypted by uh, some uh, specific. Uh, master key like uh, trust key and user key. User key is uh, the key we we just uh, type uh, from the user space uh, by the some tool and the uh, enroll the enroll the, the 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 password to by the key key control tool to the user uh, to the kernel space. Then we use the uh, password to encrypt the uh, one encrypted key. Okay, then decrypt uh, a port. Portion of the encrypted key can uh, contain either a simple uh, similar key or more complex structure, maybe the uh, other kind of the blob, maybe including uh, some sort value or something. Uh, but uh, uh, now we we are we are discussing in, in this presentation we discuss uh, about the similar key. But actually it, it can carry any kinds of the blob, just the blob need to need will be the encrypted by the master key. Okay, this is another this is another picture about the uh, flow of uh, uh, creating or a uh, pipe. We say pipe is a uh, one uh, key control uh, command to uh, expose the uh, encrypted key to the user space. So uh, this is one uh, flow. Uh, it's a, it's a everything in kernel. Uh, at the beginning, we we grab we get a one a random number from the random pool. And either is a one new key is a pen text. Uh, we can say it's a similar key. Then uh, it's, we use the uh, uh, encryption increase, in, key to in, to AES encrypt the key. But uh, before this, I uh, we the encryption key actually is the the de derived from the uh, KMK. We say the kernel master key. The kernel master key actually is a request from the uh, uh, system or user key ring. Uh, normally, the KMK is enrolled from the user space, and uh, uh, the encrypted key uh, accept two kind of uh, uh, the master key type. The first is a trusted key, the TPM sealed key. And other kinds of the master key is a user key. User key means a user type typing the password, the, the key, the user key. Then it it it, it derived the two kinds of T is a encryption key and a authentication key. Actually, the driver is very simple. It's just a hash with a one, uh, one string, one static string to generate two, two, diff two keys. And the uh, user uh, encryption key to encrypt, AES encrypt the original pen text of the key. Then we generate one uh, encrypted blob. Then we use the uh, authentication key to hash mac, HMAC, hash mac to to sign the encrypted key and attach the signature uh, on, on the on the blob. Then after that, we generate a uh, encrypted key, uh, encrypted including the uh, uh, encrypted key and the, the signature. Then the blob can be uh, exposed to a user space. Then user space can store the the blob to anywhere. Uh, this structure is uh, about the encrypted key payload. Uh, it's uh, the from the uh, key, the uh, kernel, kernel source. 
and uh, the is is also is a, a bit uh, compared uh, compared with the uh, trusted key, but uh, it's not uh, uh, too too hard to understand. The, the first uh, is also have the RCU lock, then uh, have some address point that put point to the data blob. Uh, it's a, it can more convenient convenient to use the in the later kernel source, and uh, and uh, keep some dense of uh, our data. Then uh, include a key format uh, like maybe you uh, use a user key or uh, the or the trusted key to be the buzzer key to encrypt this uh, key. Then encrypt the data. Encrypt the data uh, means uh, one the pen text of the uh, the the key, the the, the real password. Actually, it's still a re uh, random number, but uh, it, it uh, is a pen text in the kernel space. Then the latest one is also is still the one encrypted data blob with the HMAC signature. Then uh, if the user space want to expose the uh, the blob, then uh, we we just uh, expose uh, give the user space this uh, blob and the signature. Okay, the uh, red the red box the detail is here. Uh, it's a payload of the uh, encrypted uh, key. So uh, we can see the it's including the format. Uh, they have two kinds of format uh, supported by the uh, encrypted key. It's a default type or the key used by the encrypted file system. And uh, it keep the master key description. Uh, otherwise, it, can, it cannot be uh, decrypted by the kernel because we, we don't know how to find out the uh, master key from the key ring. So that's why we keep the master key, uh, master key description here. Then uh, data lens, and we keep the uh, IV in, uh, initialization vector is used for AES encryption and uh, encrypt the data. And the uh, latest one is a uh, signature, is a HMAC. And we, uh, what we expose to the, uh, the user space is from the format format element to the signature. The, the red blocks uh, part of the blob. So we expose to the uh, user space. Okay, uh, then uh, it's, a all, it's a two kinds of uh, uh, key type. Then follow this idea, my original idea is uh, because we want to put, we, we put uh, one a secret in the EFI variable. So, so my idea is uh, then we can use the secret is a similar key to wrapper this similar key as a one key new kind of key key type a master key type then it can be used like the uh, trusted key or user key as a master key type to to encrypt the encrypt key to generate the encrypt key so then the any other uh, subsystem in the kernel can use uh, the, this kind of key. But of course, I finally, uh, Option did not accept this idea, and I will say I will uh, say the reason why uh, it cannot be accepted. Okay, uh, my original idea is to uh, create one kind of a new kernel key type. It's actually it's a one, one new master key type for encrypted key. And the uh, uh, benefit is uh, is it does not need, doesn't need uh, user space doesn't need user space involved. Because we directly read the, the secret uh, before the uh, in uh, in the EFI stop before the uh, real kernel start the, the uh, kernel start. Now, so uh, is a is a is a uh, you can uh, kernel read this uh, secret very early, so we don't need the uh, user space to, to involve. So, which means that the user space will never know the pen text of this key. Just yes, uh, the. Uh, the idea is that is, but uh, actually still have some extension. So don't need the user space. So we don't need to touch uh, any RD or use a key control tool to enroll a key. And second, uh, it, it does not need a TPM. So if you are uh, a machine, the machine have a UEV firmware, then we can use this function. This kind of key. And it can be loaded by the key, uh, the kernel in the very early, the early birth stage. Then, which means that we can use it very early, like a hibernation. Uh, we 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 launch a hibernation uh, in a very 
uh, in the early stage in the uh, 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 now in the in the RD. So we don't need to in enroll the key key before the uh, hibernation because we already know it from the uh, EFI variable. Then the but still have uh, some uh, problem because uh, it, uh, it rely on the firmware layer and the secure boot. So this, in this function, the idea is uh, the, the most point, oh, sorry. Okay, I will introduce that. The EFI boot variable must be a secure uh, when the secure boot enabled because when the secure boot enabled, only a uh, side, we say authenticate, uh, EFI binary can be executed by the CPU. So which means that uh, no, uh, all, uh, only trust code can, can access, can, can, it's possible access the EFI boot variable. So the, we, we, we think the uh, OEM or Intel should, should be very careful about uh, to sign uh, one EFI uh, binary. So, so far, we can say it's a, uh, the EFI uh, variable, we say it's secure. So it, it uh, rely on the uh, firmware layer and the uh, user need to enable the secure boot. Uh, it, but it consumed a uh, limit uh, NVRAM space. So uh, in some very early uh, machine, maybe not really early, but some machines have a very limit uh, NVRAM for the uh, EFI variable. So sometimes we, we heard uh, some guys complain their machine cannot uh, create the uh, machine owner key, or they, 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 they cannot uh, do a right uh, garbage collection of the EFI variable. Uh, the, those things are almost about uh, uh, the manufacturer did not, did not give enough space of the uh, NVRAM for the EFI variable store. So it's a one problem. Another problem is uh, some bug buggy firmware may erase or break the key. Actually, it's maybe not really buggy. Um, uh, any firmware is possible to erase the, the EFI variable. We not in the EFI spec. When, when the, you update the EFI firmware, uh, the manufacturer may uh, erase uh, those uh, variable in, in the EFI uh, variable store. If they cannot recognize the name, uh, because it's not in the spec. So it's a one uh, risk of uh, uh, the key is possible uh, erase or broke, broke, broke breaks by, by the, uh, by the uh, manufacturer, the firmware, firmware provider or manufacturer. But my original idea is to provide a one uh, uh, mechanism to expose the, the, uh, the EFI secure key, we say the EFI root key to the user space, but uh, you need to work with the ma machine owner key or the, uh, the, uh, the kernel trust key ring uh, uh, by the uh, PKI. But finally, uh, because of this uh, uh, concept did, did not, I mean the EFI secure key did not accept it by the uh, upstream, so I stopped this job. Okay, I, I sent this page, uh, 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 before, but uh, now it's rejected, denied by the main line. So uh, if you are interested in about my implementation, then you can reference my uh, uh, this uh, GitHub. And all, if you are interested in to implement one new key type in the uh, Linux kernel, then you can reference this code. It's, a, it's not too complex, it's simple. Just uh, look at it. Okay. Uh, one concept is about the uh, EFI root key. Uh, the original idea is to put one secret in the EFI per variable before easy boot service. We say that before the uh, kernel uh, start. So uh, I, I call this uh, key is a uh, EFI root key, like the uh, TPM, uh, the, the, the storage root key in the TPM. So it's a one a root secret. Uh, in this uh, hierarchy of, of the uh, EFI secure key, secure key. So when I just say when the secure boot is enabled, uh, only sign the EFI binary can access the EFI boot, var uh, boot service variable before it's the boot service. So which means that the EFI boot service variable is uh, secure. But it is a assumption is uh, 
is wrong uh, because uh, not totally wrong, but uh, it have a big risk because it is relying on the Microsoft the business. So and uh, also the OEM business. So finally, uh, Upstream did not accept that. So then ERK we call it either ERK is the EFI rookie. Uh, e, uh, uh, EFI proof stop is generally a uh, uh, five five uh, five twelve uh, bit uh, random number and uh, stored in the EFI proof variable uh, proof service variable, and uh, the random number can be a root key to encrypt for encryption and authentication. Okay, then uh, the re the relation of the uh, e ERK and the EFI secure key is. A it's very simple. EFI security key is a, is a one. The secure the secret is a, also a random number, uh, uh, created by the kernel, uh, by a request from the uh, random pool, then encrypted by the e ERK. So this picture show the uh, co compare 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 with the uh, user key and the trusted key. Uh, the the first one is a user key. We can see the uh, maybe the user type type is a typing uh, password. Then it create a one uh, actually is a pen text or uh, or maybe a password hash hash of the password by the user space tool. Then enroll the 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 number to uh, a kernel. The kernel user key key control. Sorry. Uh, how how much? Is it finished? Uh, Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, uh, two minutes. Okay. <laughs> so the idea like this: uh, uh, password. So the the root root secret is a password, and uh, also the like a TPN is an RK and the EFI. I I call it the ERK in the uh, variable uh, per service variable. So this uh, picture is uh, like the uh, we generate one. Oh, sorry, I skip too 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 fast. Okay, it's a, it's a flow to generate the one e EFI key. Oh, it's a structure like uh, we, we just introduced the include key, but uh, uh, we also it can be the, the, the include bar can also can be uh, exposed to a user space. Or uh, we can use a key control tool uh, to uh, create the EFI key like other key type. So the most important is uh, why it cannot be accepted by the mainline. So the I I I send this uh, idea this page to the uh, UEFI subsystem, and the the mail and uh, the art the UEFI maintainer subsystem maintainer he writes he say uh, uh, he poses some some uh, some question about the uh, this idea. The first is uh, the only few the uh, entropy source. In the EFI boost stage, so the we do not have a strong enough uh, empathy, entropy uh, source before uh, in the in the uh, boost, early boost stage. So the only use a RDTSC or I uh, IA254 uh, IC is not qualified for the uh, semi key. So we need to use the RDRNTD instruction or the EFI random number. Uh, protocol to uh, to uh, support this, so which means that the the random number should the secret should generated by the uh, hardware. Okay, the the the, the key the is a key point is uh, why the this function cannot be accepted because uh, um, uh, secure boot is rely on a Microsoft business uh, interest, which means that uh, Microsoft did not keep the. Uh, Confidentiality keep a secret in in the EFI variable, so maybe we should not maybe maybe uh, we should not uh, do that because uh, uh, Microsoft do not care about that, so they they don't don't care if we leak the one secret, uh, because just because the Linux kernel use it, so and uh, oh yeah maybe they they also don't care they they just keep the public key in the uh, variable but they did not keep a secret in the variable so it's the key point for uh, why the the option did not accept this idea okay that, that's all okay sorry uh, so if I have a question just uh, ask me after the session sorry I I already over <laughs> the time okay thank you thanks for your attention.